Okay guys, welcome back to Sponge's Tech Tips. How's it going? I'm Sponge. Um, before we get started here, do me a favor, go hit that subscribe button, please. Uh, it's the numbers are building up. I'm excited about it. It's, it's not a ton, but um, I think that means I'm getting you guys some good information on the cars you want. And I tell you what, I got my work cut out for me, so I got a lot more videos coming. So do me a favor, go hit that subscribe button. When we're done with this video, if it helped you out, hit the like button. And then, as always, please uh, go hit up the comment section. I love hearing from you guys. So look at this. It is another beautiful day in Washington. I'm in Woodenville, Washington. Uh, I don't know what's going on. It was winter a week ago, a week and a half ago, and now it's back to uh, blue skies. I think it was 70 yesterday. It was probably high 60s today. I don't think it got up to 70, but... Uh, but yeah, lots of great weather, so lots of time to work on cars still. And and man, I am just drowning in cars. <laughs> I can tell you, look at this. I barely even have a place to park. I'm uh, I'm not in my green and silver SEMA truck. Unfortunately, I had a little fender bender last uh, last week, a week and a few days ago. But uh, so I'm driving our our Escalade. But uh, other than that, all of these cars are for us to work on. We got a little bit of everything in here. So, um, so yeah, lots of, lots of videos coming to you. So today, what are we working on? We are working on this 2016, let me shut the door there, 2016 Subaru WRX STI, uh, four-door sedan. I don't know if they offer a two-door anymore in these, but it's, um, it's not the wagon, obviously, but this should be similar. It's 2016, let's take a look at our production date, just so you guys can compare, make sure that your production date is near. So this is 06 of 15, so uh, very early. A lot of times, it used to be that you didn't see the change till 08, 09, but like this is uh, June of 15, and it's listed as a 16 for some reason, so, so you decide, but... Um, in this situation, a really nice car. Uh, it's already had the bodywork done to it. And I can tell you that this was just a very minor fender bender. This fender right here is what was fixed. Probably doesn't even look like the bumper got fixed, but the headlight and the... No, that's the original headlight still. But that fender got repaired. It looks like it kind of went into the door area. That's it. And uh, pretty simple, but whatever happened to them, it locked up the seat belts, and that's what we're going to be working on today. At least one of them. So you can see a lot of times when when you're in a, a fender bender, your seat belt locks up, and that triggers your airbag sensor. And both these are locked up. This one's loose and locked. Nobody was sitting in this one over here. Let's go over there and I'll show you. Nobody was sitting on the passenger side, but as you can see, oh, there's the tape. See, I told you they did the fender and then blended over the door. So there's our tape there. But yeah, on this side, nobody was sitting here and this seat belt is locked up tight. You can't even, you can't even budge it. So it's just one of those things that happens um, when these things are in a fender bender. Maybe he slid and and hit something with the wheels or something. So it may have thought it was a bigger accident than it was. Uh, I do not know if they may have done some repairs to the the control arms or something like that, but I wasn't uh, pervy to that. So what we're gonna do here is we are going to show you how to get all the way to your seat belt. We're gonna show you the proper removal of that. Uh, tools you're gonna need, let's go over them real quick. You're gonna need a socket wrench with a 10 millimeter and a 14 millimeter. You're gonna need a panel popper of sorts, possibly, you technically you don't need them, but you might want them. I've got this one and I've got this one. Make sure they're clean. If not, use a plastic trim piece removal. You're also gonna need our handy dandy uh, tiny little pan head or a pick. And that'll be one of the last things that I'll show you, but we'll need one of those, so. So the first thing you're gonna do is you are, we're working on the driver's side, but this should be similar to the passenger side. First thing we're gonna do, we're gonna move this seat all the way forward. And we are going to flip the back 
as far forward as we can, okay? Down here, we're gonna be taking off this this trim panel right here, this trim piece right here on the door sill. You can use your panel popper, but in all honesty, you can just get your fingers under there. Just carefully pop it off. It's just plastic compression clips. Uh, I think there's a couple metal ones. Yeah, here's a metal one that came off with it here, and then this one stayed. And you just gotta make sure when you put it back together, you line those up, so set that aside. Uh, while you're up here, let's take your rubber door sill trim and uh, or your weather stripping, I should say. Just pull that off. Uh, we're going to have to go up all the way to the top. And then we're going to go to the back. Now, the back isn't so simple. We do need to take off this rear piece here. Um, I'm, I'm sure you can get away with doing it without it, but just to be safe so we don't damage any plastic, we're going to remove that. But to remove that, it goes underneath the seat. So there's a little trick. If you go underneath the front of the seat, kind of sneak your hand in, you feel a little pocket. It's right in the middle. And there's a little, kind of a little paddle that you're going to grab. You're going to grab it and pop it forward. You see that pop up a little? Okay, so now that's loose. And you're going to go over to the passenger side. Same place, right in the middle. You know, pull it towards you, and it's now loose, okay? Now, once you get that loose, you're gonna pry the entire back seat up and pull it forward. And that is it, there isn't one bolt holding that in. Now we're gonna take this out. If it's clean, set it on the roof or something like that, just upside down. If not clean, set it on the ground on a box or something like that, but... Okay, so now our rear seat's out. This is going to give you access to your fuel pump. A few things, see, obviously seat belts, but we're not accessing those. We're going after this stuff today. So, next trip piece, we're going to take this bottom trim piece off. Again, you can just grab it with your hand. Start popping it up. Okay, I have noticed every time I take these off, this little piece stays in and it comes unhooked. That's okay, because it's actually easy to fish that back underneath when you want to reinstall it, so. All right, once that's, oh, I should have showed you real quick since we're here, that uh, the levers I was talking about underneath the seats, they're right here. So you kind of, you're gonna get your finger underneath and pull towards you. And you can see it unhooks that seat right there. That might help clear up exactly what you're doing there so okay next thing uh, rear weather stripping let's unhook that all the way up to the top oh, that one came a little further we don't we don't need to go up into the headliner but if it's in your way pull it down I guess we'll just pull it down out of the way just try not to bend it or shut the door or anything on it so okay now we're gonna get in the back area here's our seat belt next thing we're going to do we're going to pop this panel off. Again, you can do this by hand. Just kind of pull the top out and then start popping it towards you. You do notice I haven't used, I haven't used the uh, panel popper at all yet because it's pretty doable by hand. All right, so one of our clips came off. Make sure you reinstall that there's actually another one it was on the floor in here earlier but pop that back in that has one two three and then four green clips uh the green ones around here somewhere i'll find it before i put it back in so okay next thing you're going to do we are up here on the handle we've got to uncover the upper bolt up here okay <laughs> And this is where your little pick or your, well, not, not where. It's one of the places where your little pan head or your pick or your panel popper is going to come into play, okay? So right up here, you can see there's a, a joint right there. That's what we got to get out, okay? And then you've got to pry this towards you okay see how it kind of came looser all right now i want you guys to be careful because we don't want to remove the button you want to leave that button in there so you want to kind of break this free on both sides 
See if I can do it. And it's coming off. It came off. All right. Mine came off. That's okay. It happens. So once you get this little cover piece off here, your goal was really to leave this attached because this has to get fished back underneath this little metal tab here. I don't know if we can do that without a tool. Let's see if we can do it. Oh, we did it. Oh, no, we didn't. <laughs> All right, so we're going to need... That's going to be a little bit trickier to put back on. So what you have to do is you have to, you have to raise this back up and then slide it underneath these two little tabs there and there, and it'll slide up underneath. And that's, that's what pulls to release the seat belt. So we'll... Uh, that's going to be kind of hard. That's kind of a two-handed deal, and if I'm holding the, the camera, I, it's going to be hard to do that. But I, I think you guys get the idea. Maybe we can pop it out. We'll see once we get done here. Okay, set those aside so you don't lose them. All right. Now, we've got 14 millimeter, 14 millimeter down here, and then behind the seat belt, we have a 10 millimeter. It does have a, a Phillips head, but um, they're usually so tight that you'll you'll wreck the... The Phillips head, so I recommend just using the um, the 10 mil. Now I haven't normally I break these free. I haven't done that yet. Shouldn't be too difficult. Let's see if we can do it. So I'm breaking the 10 mil. Hold on, my ratchet's going the wrong way. There we go. I have an extension on mine. It's not really necessary, but. Uh, you might want it. Okay, so I broke that 10 millimeter free. Let me transition to the 14 mil here. We're going up to the top. Let's just break that free. Okay, and then let's go down to the bottom. The other 14 mil at the bottom of the seatbelt. This tab is kind of moves around a bit. So let's see if we can do it with the extension. There we go. These, this is this is all original. It's never been taken off before, so. Okay, so let's unbolt this. This one's probably attached. Sorry, I moved the camera there, guys. Okay, we're doing all right here. It should come out enough to. Okay. So there's that bolt out, set that aside. Let's do the top one since we have our 14 millimeter socket on here already. Once you break them free, you can just do it by hand on these. They don't use the uh, like thread lock. Okay, that's out. We do need to switch our socket back to the 10 mil. Or if you have a Phillips head handy, you can use that. But like I said, I just like using the and I always recommend to, I like using six points. Uh, you can use 12 points, but there's a greater likelihood of stripping the, the bolt if you do there's stripping the head of the, the bolt. Okay, so that is now unhooked. We've got the top one unhooked, we've got this one. Okay, the next thing you have to do, and this is where your pick or your tiny little pan head is gonna come back into play here. This yellow cap, let's see if we can get down there a little closer. This yellow cap here, that's your little safety. You're going to get underneath that. Let's see if I can do it. I'm a little high. There we go. Okay, so I'm just going underneath it and I'm prying it out a little bit. See it pop free. And from this point, it will come out. Now, if you try to remove these airbag plugs uh, without doing that, you are going to break this plug and then you have to rebuild it. Oh, I forgot to say something. If you're working on something that hasn't had the airbag deployed uh, or the airbag light on, you should unhook your battery before you do this. You should do it anyway, especially if your airbag hasn't been deployed. Uh, this one hasn't, and but I have everything's turned off and I probably should not do this, but uh, if you were to do this, you are taking a very, very small chance of your airbag deploying. Um, again, very, very small chance. 
not huge chance, but a very small chance. Now, for sure though, what it will do is it will turn on your airbag light and then you have to reset it. Now, our airbag light's already on because these locked up, so it doesn't really matter in this case. So, Okay, so with the plug out, with your bolts out, you're now going to just reach down. You're going to lift that out and our... Oh, not yet. I'm sorry. We got one more thing to do. I forgot, guys. I'm jumping ahead here. We've got one more 14 mil bolt down here. Let's see if we can get to this. Now, we, you may opt. I forgot one entire aspect here. There's one more 14 millimeter bolt holding the bottom of the belt on, guys. Sorry. I jumped ahead. I thought we were done, but we are not. So let's hook up our 14 mil again, put it on our ratchet. You can squeeze down. You can kind of squeeze the carpet down a little bit. You don't have to take the carpet up. There we go. This one's uh, kind of a long bolt. It has a like a huge washer. We'll take this all the way out. I'm sorry. I probably should have loosened this first, guys, but you can see it. We're almost there, but it's having trouble focusing. There we go. Like I said, it's a long, it's a long bolt, but there we are. You can see how long that thing is right there, and these are those big kind of spacers. Okay, and just like that, our bad seat belt is out. Okay, and then the other thing, let's see if we can just do this real quick. If you did what we did earlier in the video and you um, remove that, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to get underneath that and pry this out. kind of takes a couple. There it goes. So you can see it's kind of popping out. And this is why it's a two-hander thing. You're going to have to hold that out. Oop. You're going to have to hold it out and then slide that little flange underneath it and like i said i'm i'm gonna need two hands to do this so I, I won't be able to do it on the camera i don't have my tripod handy so all right now reinstallation of the new seat belt is the exact opposite of what we just did there and um if you're doing both seat belts like we are make sure not to put your back seat in until after you've done the other side or you've just you're just gonna have to start it over again so but that's it and then uh make sure after you're all done uh plug your battery back in and you should be good to go all right guys that's it i appreciate you tuning in hopefully this helps out you subaru wrx owners out there um again if you enjoy this video please do me a favor and hit that subscribe button uh i've got other stuff coming definitely more subaru so if you're a subaru fan um we will definitely have more for you so all right guys like this video go say hi in the comments see you on the next one bye